want to go in? I sure do. <laughs> okay. And so we're going to um, continue. I'm going to share from Joe Olstein today. The thought is honor the Lord with your body. The scripture reference is 1 Corinthians 6, verse 20. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. Scripture says that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, and we are to honor the Lord with our bodies. How do we do that? You take care of it. You respect it. You treat it as valuable. You use your body to bring him glory. When you stand strong against temptation, you are honoring the Lord with your body. When you take care of your yourself by eating properly and getting enough sleep, you are honoring the Lord with your body. You are saying, Lord, thank you for this gift of life. I am choosing to take care of myself so that I can serve you with my whole heart, mind, and strength. As we enter into the new year, many people make new goals about their health. Let this be an encouragement to you to stay on track with good habits. As you honor the Lord with your body, you will be strengthened and empowered by his peace. You'll be able to stand against temptation and embrace the good things he has in store for you. Father, today I commit to honor you with my body. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for empowering me against temptation. Show me the plan you have for me today so that I can honor you in everything I do. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Thank you, Minister Joanne. Thank well, you so much. Thank you, Erica. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to get right into the blessing of today. And, of course, everybody knows I'm all excited, so you know how that goes. <laughs> you know, you're really excited. Sometimes it's just hard to contain all this goodness inside. <laughs> so we're going to get uh, right into why we're here this morning. And I am just so excited to bring to our experience a wonderful, phenomenal, amazing spirit to this earth. I mean, the work that she does is amazing. When I first came into her experience, it was with the book Heal Thyself over at the health food store here in Chicago. And I was waiting to get a colonic, and I was reading her book. I was like, oh, my God, this is some good stuff. So I called myself going to go on the first 21-day fast, and I learned how to, man, I really learned how to forgive and work within myself of forgiveness, thinking that I didn't really need to forgive nobody, thinking I don't have nothing against somebody. But when I really read her book about being addicted to Fools and have an addiction to relationships and different stuff. I started really relating to the addiction that my mom had, and it took me to places that, whew, I'm. I don't think I would be here today if it wasn't for her. So, you know, she was part of the reason why I am today, and so I am so grateful. Queen of Four is an internationally renowned best-selling author. She's a holistic wellness entrepreneur and highly sought-after natural health practitioner. She is committed to informing, inspiring, elevating, motivating, and educating her, the consciousness of our people through global awareness, through practice, products, and teaching. With over 40 years of experience, Queen Four. Queen of Four has built a wellness empire that includes the Queen of Four Wellness Institute, the City of Wellness Society, her Heal Thyself and Sacred Product line. She has published, I think, at least five books that I'm going to say that that's what I know of. I know Heal Thyself, Sacred Woman, City of Wellness, Men Heal Thyself, Overcoming the Angry Vagina. She is committed to womb wellness, and I'm just excited to bring her to without further ado. We're going to let her come and tell her story. Queen of Four, if you are available, can you start six? Hello? Good morning. We're here. I am good morning. <laughs> I am here and I am available. <laughs> My, I am so honored to be in this prayer circle 
to be in this anointing, to be one with my brothers, my sisters, my wellness community, my prayer warriors and faith walkers. Thank you so much for having me. It is an honor. I can go and start to communicate with you, or you can ask me the question that opens the way. You let me know. But you know I wanted us to start off with your story. How did you get All started right. in wellness? <laughs> yes. Oh, How hmm. did you even get started in such a big, oh, my God, this is a big project. Still in the community. <laughs> well, you know, your own walk is a reflection of where you're going to walk. And so I started at age 17. I was sick from age 7 to 17. I had eczema from head to toe. Every so, every two or three years, another disease would come through my life, mentally, physical. And by the time I reached 17, I had eczema from head to toe. I had chronic asthma. And the doctors, they, did, they gave me the strongest, potent medication, but I was still getting progressively worse. And my breath, my lungs were being labored. It was a labor to get a breath when I would have an attack. I had also PM, chronic PMS that every month I would be bedridden. And even with the painkillers, it still wasn't enough for me to survive. It was just such agony during my menstrual flow. I had um, also, I was very introverted, very shy, didn't want to really speak up. But I was an artist, so I had to open up. I had to share my dance, my song, my poems. But in that process, I said this is not how it's supposed to be. I just knew something was really wrong here, but there was an answer. Did I know where the answer was? Well, in the call out, a friend of mine said, why don't you come on this healing retreat? It's a three-day retreat. And I said, well, what are they serving for food? (laughs) And I was eating chicken, and I was eating macaroni and cheese, and I was eating candy yams and everything that is what's called soul food diet. And then the fast food industry had attacked my body through hamburgers and french fries and such. So I went on this retreat, and it was all vegetarian. I got off the bus. I did not have my medication. And the grass, the trees, it kicked in and triggered the wheezing, the eczema. So I'm scratching, I'm wheezing, and no medication. And I went in deep inside, and I said, what am I going to do? And for the first time, I heard the inner voice tell me my first formula, eat grapefruits, lemons, and oranges. And I did just that. Later on, I realized that that was my first fast, my first cleanse that cut up the mucus that was in my lungs and my sinus that ultimately flushed out the asthma. Then by the nighttime, I was to lay down, but I couldn't lay down because I was still wheezing and I had plenty of water for the day. But I sat in front of a fireplace while everyone else went into their room and lay down. And If you are having an attack, if you lay down, your lung could shut down. So with that heat all night long, it was going into my lungs. I did not. I realized later on, over the years, that that was my first sweat lodge. Since then, I've given walked many people through sweating and fasting and cleansing. That next morning, upon rising, for one hour, mucus came out of my nose, my mouth, my eyes, and later on, I realized that that was my detox. And one hour later, the asthma stopped, the eczema, the itching stopped, the red blotchy eyes turned back to the whites of the eyes. And my mind that was in such a race of fear went into a state of total calm and serenity. And that day opened up a new way for me. I picked up one book that changed my life, and that was Dick Gregory, Cooking with Mother Nature. And I heard about and I read about his the fasting, the internal cleansing, how his family joined him on the quest of wellness. And I left from that retreat that up in the mountains with a new life. They were talking about what I do now. They talked about colon wellness. They talked about internal hygiene. They talked about vegetarian lifestyle. These were the workshops. I went back home and I changed my life immediately. And I've been on the path for now. 42 years, healing myself. I opened up my wellness center two years later after I studied holistic health practice and became a holistic health consultant, a polarity practitioner, a yoga instructor, and opened up my wellness center, and the name of my center is Heal Thyself. From that, several years later, a publishing house asked me to write a book. I wrote the book called Heal Thyself, 
that was the constant meditation and prayer. I had to heal myself. As healing myself, I was able to help my community heal themselves, my family to heal themselves. And today I still take the journey to heal myself daily. To be on this call right now is a part of the mission of Heal Thyself, and I've already received my healing for the morning, and I give thanks. Oh. <laughs> Who are your primary teachers? Who, who kind of journeyed you, with you through this process? Mm-hmm. One of the first teachers that he was the first one that I heard, and um, he was well, he was a master herbalist, and his name is he's the late great Dr. John E. Moore. Mm-hmm. Dr. Johnny Moore, a master herbalist for over 50 years, um, he took me under his wing and he taught me about plants and the power of plants as a medicine, as a healing for the body. And I would, as, as I was giving my various workshops, he would always be with me. I would travel with him. He would travel with me. And so I really took him as my spiritual healing grandfather, and I walked with him. The other one was Dr. Alvina Fulton. And I got her, and I'm out from Chicago, and I got it through osmosis through her. Every time I would come to Chicago, I have family in Chicago, I would um, always make a hodge and would visit her. And one of the things she told me, she says, if they ever come for you, you that, that she said that you just tell them that you're making soup for the people. And she took me down into her sanctum where she would have gallons of tonics, um, for arthritis and tonics for diabetes and tonics for high blood pressure. And people would come and get their, their jug of their tonic and change their lifestyle through her ministry of wellness. So she was that mother spirit that really um, was my my vision and my reflection that I would grow through her and walk in her footprints. And then I studied with um, Harris's Institute of Wellness. And through there I became a holistic practitioner and then I started to study colon therapy and took colon therapy on as a as a means of helping one to detox the body and to get into cleansing and fasting. Mm. Do you believe there's a difference between detoxing and fasting? Well, it's actually really one and the same. Because for me it's everything is through you you get to your light. You get to your power. You get to your wholeness. You get to your healing relationships through purging, through releasing, through letting go. So there's different types of fasting. There's the fast from negative relationships. There's a fast from toxic conversation. There's a fast from eating foods. So you're liquefying. You may... I don't recommend water fast necessarily for long distance. I recommend therapeutic fasting so that you cleanse the spirit, but you also detox and rejuvenate the body. And so when you're fasting, you can fast from cleansing the thoughts, you can cleanse the the disease, physical, you can cleanse the emotional. When you do a therapeutic fast, you can actually take care of all of those levels of cleansing at one time. And what is a therapeutic fast? A therapeutic fast, for example, if someone is suffering from pain, arthritis, they would take into their their diet um, turnip juice. And for someone who was suffering from um, cancer, they would take into their juice therapy their broccoli juice. If someone had poor circulation, they would take then into their um, juice therapy cranberries to get the circulation flowing. So depending – and then – You have herbs for different issues. Say one is fatigue, they would have dandelion. And one is poor memory, they would add the go-to-cola as their herbal compound. So you have your herbal compound, you have your juice therapy, green juice compound, you have your fresh fruit juice detox compound. Then you have your internal washing from your enemas to your healing, to your um, colon therapy, to possibly eating your okra or taking your herbal active to purge the system. And then you bring into that your healing baths. So then you're taking the baths to emerge yourself in, and it's a nature's way of doing a natural surgery by taking, for example, your lemon water while in the tub or your cider vinegar, and then in the tub you'll have your Epsom salt or your Dead Sea salt or your flower essences or your aromatherapy and your crystals and stones. So you can become as simple as taking a crystal and meditating 
and doing a prayer of fasting and cleansing and fast from negative words for 24 hours and see your life transform. Or you can fast and do a more intensive fast if you're trying to come off of the medication holistically. And, of course, I'm going to do a disclaimer. If you're seeing your physician, continue seeing your physician. But what will happen every 21 days of walking this path of wellness, you go back to your physician. The physician will then decrease the medication. And over a season, you'll be able to actually come off of medication, potentially, or prevent the surgery that is, um, that is uh, over you that you might need to take if you don't have the knowledge of cleansing and fasting. I remember in Heal Thyself book when I first read it that mm-hmm. um, I really learned a lot about, you know, like a lot of times we see and hear people having an alcohol addiction or mm-hmm. um, drug addiction, but we never think about our own person. At least I can say for myself, I didn't realize that there were things that I had addictions to food or relationships or whatever at the time that um, I was going through my journey with, with Heal Thyself and Sacred Woman. And I was, you know, thinking about, you know, those addictions, and I thought about the the recipes that you uh, talked about and how we could close a lot of these um, addiction places down if we could really think about how to get into our... Um, can you talk a little bit about the addictions and how to release and release ourselves from things that no longer serve us a higher purpose? Hmm. Well, my specialty is food is medicine, and how to use the elements to break the addictions. The universe travels in a clockwise flow. To your right, it circles. That's how the sun travels. That's how the earth travels. That's how the star system travels in a clockwise motion. When we are addicted, we are traveling counterclockwise. We're going to the left. When we take in... um, relationships, when we're, as we're born through our families, as we're traveling on our life's journey, if we come into, which everyone pretty much comes into the world going counterclockwise because we birth ourselves. If our mothers, fathers have anger, pain, frustration, they're, ang- they're holding on grudges, that's what they conceive, which is ourselves, and then they birth us and they birth a reflection of what their experience is. So addictions are passed down through generations, through generations of pain and suffering. So your addiction is not just your own. It is your father's addiction, your mother's addiction. It is your grandmother's addiction, your grandfather's addiction. It is the pain. It is the hurt. It is the relationships that did not fan out well. It is the 400 years of chattel slavery. It is all of that brings us to this place. And how we handle our addictions is we look for comfort, but it's not really comfort. When we look for the comfort that's not real comfort, it makes us sicker, and we go into the spirals of going down, and we keep going down. So as we are growing, as we're supposed to be growing in our lives, we're actually declining, and we're aging. Someone can be old at 15 because they're angry and they're stressed, and they're used to holding on to the rage. So I say you can shift that energy. When I have a client, I'll tell them they can recycle, they can re- reaffirm and realign. Let's do a reset button. So what I, one of the ways in which I do it, I will first saturate the body with green, the chlorophyll. The sun, through photosynthesis, goes down into the plant, and that gives the pigmentation of chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is what the blood is made up of. Our addictions are in the blood. If we clean mm-hmm. and rebuild and repair our blood, then we, we alleviate the cravings, we alleviate the addiction. The cravings could become, I'm lonely, I just have to have somebody in my life. And you just take somebody. And that somebody may cause more havoc because you're going counterclockwise. When you purify your blood, you desire to walk in the light of the Most High And then you attract that divine light coming to you in your relationships. And in that breaking of that, in the cleansing and saturating your body with the green foods and from the green earth, the the plants, the herbs, you will break the addiction just on that alone. And then your energy will start to move in a clockwise manner. And now you'll start to every day that you take a walk to wellness. It's taking a journey, a life journey. It's not a quick fix. It's not when I get well, I'm going to go back to the fast food, the fast life, the toxic relationships. So once you say, I am ready, you have to be ready to shift. 
You have to, and, and many times you only shift when the pain is on you. I had someone to sit with me yesterday, and as soon as she sat down, she began to weep. I just asked, how can I help you? And she said, I am a pastor, and I am, I am hurting from a relationship that I just had. So I, I gave her a tonic. I read her energy. It was all going counterclockwise. She took the green tonic, the green life formula that I have, and I gave her the breath of life, eucalyptus and peppermint. Her lungs opened up immediately. She had the chlorophyll. We did a prayer of affirmation of moving in her, to her new life, and all of a sudden her energy started to open up. And those tears of sadness became tears of hope and joy. She saw a vision. She could see herself coming out of this state of remorse, of pain. And so as she started to see it through the green, we moved into the green field, she could see that she, she was breaking her addiction as we were sitting. That's only one thing. There's so many ways. We are made up of five elements, air, fire, water, earth, and spirit, consciousness. As we begin to charge all of those aspects of ourselves that makes up the universe, that makes up ourselves, we break all addictions. So the addiction could be in your blood. The addiction could be in your bones and joints. The addiction could be in your lungs. The addiction could be in your skin. The addiction is in the body. And so we have to clear out, purge out, release out, rejuvenate all of those systems, and there's no longer an addiction for junk food, for flesh food, for toxic intercourse, for toxic conversation. You break every addiction through taking a life walk to wellness. Mm-hmm. Can I just tell you I love you? <laughs> oh, oh my God! Every word you just said was just vibrating through me. Thank you so much. That was powerful. That was definitely powerful. Get praise. Which you, you said toxic intercourse. Now, which brings me to where I, uh, you know, it's interesting how the Sacred Woman book was such mm-hmm. a blessing in my life because once I got through reading Heal Thyself, then I just wanted to read any and everything that you wrote. So my second book was Sacred Woman, and mm-hmm. that's, where I, that's where I first learned in your book um, about Sacred Women. I learned mm-hmm. about the feet being the place of understanding. And I also learned about womb, about, you know, learning to love my vagina, learning to love and, and go through a process and looking at it and going through a process of healing it and sending affirmations and light and love to it. And how did you come to um, bring that kind of information to um, the world? Because that's some powerful stuff right there. And I just was so amazed at how I felt when I started to do the work that you requested in the Sacred Woman book, especially through your nine gate. Mm. Wow. Well, as soon as you were speaking, all I went back to is myself. It always, you know, the healing takes you back to yourself. And they said, well, you've been on this path for all these years, so you should be already healed up. No, it's a life path. We're going to do it every day. We wake up. It's another level of growth. It started with self, and from self, it went out to others, and then it spread globally. And that's how we're going to heal the planet. Well, for myself, I had three children, and I had three children through cesarean section. I had three children through cesarean section because I was ignorant. I didn't know how to really heal myself, and I needed more years of healing myself. I conceived, I had all my children in my 20s, but I still had years and lifetimes through the bloodline of fast food, southern soul food cooking from Louisiana and Alabama. It was in the blood. So it took me at least seven years to clear all of those years and back to my family line out of my system. So in that process, the body had to raise its vibration, had to raise its frequency. So I conceived in mid-ground. Like we feel, oh, I did a 21-day deep, I'm, I'm good. No, it's a life path. And so midway in my walk, I conceived my children, and in that conception, I still had poisons on my, in my emotional body. I was fearful of this world. I came in fearful of this world, and I walked in fear of this world. And that translates into a toxic bloodstream, a toxic womb. So I had preeclampsia. And the doctor told me, well, if you try to go natural birth, you, the, you will end up having to take the baby out in pieces. So you have to go through cesarean section. So I did out of ignorance. But now I help women to prevent that. So I realized that we, we birth ourselves. 
And in that, it, it made me go inside myself and not only rebirth the physical body, but rebirth all the body. So I have a prayer. And the prayer is, a way, as you place your hand over your first eye, your intuitive eye, your seat of, of consciousness, your seat of Christ, your seat of God, your seat of the Most High, Allah, all one, from your brow, you hear the message. And so you, we say in womb birthing, Awaken the womb of my mind. For what I think, I create, I birth. Inhale, exhale. Place your hand over your heart. Awaken the womb of my heart. For what I feel, I birth, I create. Inhale, exhale. Place your hand over your physical womb. Awaken my womb, my seat of creation. For what I think and what I feel, I birth through my seat of creation. And today, I birth womb wellness. That is the affirmation. As I kept probing and talking to women and having womb circles, answers would come, what to do, what to say to the women. And so there is a call out of womb issues that we're having. And so for the men that are here, if she is having a womb issue, you are having a prostate issue. It's all reflective. What is internal is external. So as she heals herself, you must come on board to heal yourself. And that is why I wrote the book, Man, Heal Thyself, The Journey to Optimal Wellness, which is the very last book. So I would say to women, because of that, because of my own reflection, and I had to heal my womb, and I had to go through womb recovery and womb healing foods and womb healing teas and healing womb baths and womb affirmations, one, the, one day, I saw, or one week, I saw 30 clients, and everyone had really traumatic experiences. There was cancer, and there's AIDS, and there's a chronic high blood pressure, and hysterectomy's possibility, all of that was going in that month, that particular week, and all of a sudden I felt this pull in my womb. This is before Sacred Womb Book came out, but I was working on it. I was writing it, and this pull felt like I talked to one of my sister friends who was in my, is in my lab making the formulas, and I said, I feel like my womb is dropping out of me. I feel like my uterus is dropping down, and I did not know what to do. I said, I can't go to the hospital. I, I, I just can't. So the spirit of the Most High said, go upstairs to the next floor, lay down flat, and put your legs up against the wall in 45 degrees. And I was obedient. I did just that. And I heard the voice of the womb speak to me at that very moment and began to tell me you're holding on to too much regret and pain. You're helping more than you're giving back to self. You need to rest. And the womb began to have a conversation with me. She started to tell me the womb foods, the womb herbs. She told me to lay my hands on my womb. She told me that I'm carrying pain of relationships and a marriage that I'm still holding on to in my ovaries, in my fallopian tube. And she said, you're going to need to have a womb purge and a womb release. And I went away. I ended up going away from that womb conversation. It was a crossroads for me. And in that crossroads, either I was going to possibly have a hysterectomy because it's dropping out and becoming prolapse, that later on I learned about the prolapse womb. And it, but it, my prolapse womb hit me early on because I was taking on the burdens of the world. So I had to learn how to really take those, those pa- the painful conversations and the hurt stories and the woes and the sadness and the wounded wounds and the wounded men and then take that and make it a circle of light. So when someone comes to me with an issue, I take it into a circle of light and I show them how we can get over this, how we can overcome it, how we can transform ourselves and birth a new self and birth a new wor- world because from a fibroid tumor, there is an unnecessary surgery. A 19-year-old woman came to meet with her mother. No, the daughter was 19. The mother is mature. And she said, the doctors have said that my daughter has to have a hysterectomy. 19 years old because she's bleeding for a few months. You can arrest the bleeding. Clay packs, castor oil packs. There's 25 womb rejuvenation techniques that I share in the book. There's the, there are nine guardians, spiritual inner guardians that are indwelling. That's the anatomy of women that come to your rescue. So whatever the womb issue may be, whether it is clotting, heavy bleeding, whether it's vaginal itching and burning, whether it's vaginitis, whether it is candida, whether it is toxemia during pregnancy or difficult childbirth or miscarriage or using uh, uh, or toxic partners or sexually abusive relationships or sexually transmitted disease, that once you learn 
how to heal your womb from all these issues. You become a renewed woman. But those diseases are not just physical. They're metaphysical. They're emotional. They're psychological. These are issues that must be purged. Otherwise, our pain is passed down to our daughters and our sons. And so I say, this call, I know, that I understand the call. Uh, a month ago, it was the end of the world. And after the end of the world, it was the beginning of the new world. The Mayan Indians say that the world closed, its calendar stopped at, in, at, uh, at the, end of Jan, of the end of December. But what happens is the reset button. It's a global reset button that we can rebirth ourselves. The women folk must rebirth themselves in a very intense way because we are the ones that bring in the life through our men. And then we carry the life, and then we birth the life. What are we carrying? Are we carrying rage? Are we carrying disappointment? Are we carrying sadness? Are we carrying destruction? What are we carrying? Because that is the man that we bring into our life, and then we conceive that. We conceive his pain and our pain, and we squat down, and we birth more pain into the world. And I say that the women can rebirth the earth, that the women can rebirth the environment, air, fire, water, and earth, that through that we then create a new world of divine order where we're not birthing pain no more, not my pain and not your pain and not our pain, but a new world. So I have, I'm saying this because it's in my loins, it's in my heart, it's in my own blood that I've seen rebirthing one-on-one and two-on-two and 50 women and 100 and men rebirthing themselves. And I know that we can do it, but we have to know what time it is. But most of the times, in order to wake up, we have to go through a crisis. So I have learned that a crisis is our blessing. The crisis is the wake up. The crisis is the beginning of your awakening and the beginning of your walk. So when those tears begin to flow because you've had enough and you can't go any further, that's when you come to see me. That's when you come to see someone like us. That's when you come into a circle like this. And in that crisis, you get a chance to do the reset, to do the realignment, to do the rebirthing of yourself. So I'm, I'm, I'm just so blessed that I'm overwhelmed <laughs> <laughs> with this call, because what it's bringing out is um, nothing but love. Give thanks. Yes, I feel the love. I feel the love. I feel the passion. Oh, my God. You're an amazing sister, and I thank God for your presence on this earth. Um, I'm going to open up the line, if you don't mind. We have quite a few people mm-hmm. who want to ask some questions. Absolutely. So we want anyone who want to ask a question to our beautiful mostest from the hostess this morning. Let's get to six. <laughs> I have a question coming through. Mm-hmm. She on the text, a lady is asking um, about a hysterectomy. They told her that she needed hysterectomy, um, mm. and she was wondering what work do you actually do with hysterectomies? Okay, she's probably in her forties or fifties. She is actually forty-three. She said. Mhm. Right, and that is what that is a toxic rites of passage. When that comes up, there's two worlds. There's the fourth book is called The City of Wellness, Restoring Your Health in the Seven Kitchens of Consciousness. I asked, one woman came to see me. She was in a class, the class in Detroit. And she began to cry, and it was both women and men in the class. And I said, why are you crying? She said, because for 20 years my womb has been in pain. Every month I'm in bedridden pain. And she said, this is the first month that I have no pain. And it's like strange to me, I have no pain. Is everything okay? So for one to get to a hysterectomy, there had to be a history of pain. There had to be a diet of flesh foods and white flour products and dairy and sugar. There had to be lifetimes of maybe not enough motion and movement in the uterus. So I'm just going to give a few things one can do. One first thing is to cut down, cut back on the intake of meat, red meat, beef, pork, goat, lamb. Do do a 28-day womb detox, 28 days of no animal product or just chicken and fish in very small amounts and eat it during the day hours. 
I would also say to get my rejuvenation clay and pack your womb with the clay. What it does, it goes into the uterus and it begins to soften the hard mass. It's a hard mass. But what is a fibroid tumor? A fibroid tumor is mucus that has crystallized in the womb. Well, where does mucus come from? It comes from dairy, milk, cheese, ice cream, eggs. Just check your diet. Write down everything that you eat in the course of a week or a day, and you actually will see the tumor in the food. We are actually eating and consuming the fibroid tumor. So the dairy is one of the things that makes up a tumor. Animal products make up a tumor. Stress holds it. Fried foods holds it. It doesn't create it, but it holds it. So if you start to just begin to clear out some of those toxic foods, that would shift the growth, and it would begin to become like jelly. Right now it's hardened. For it to come to the point that you need a hysterectomy, the mucus has hardened. It's like a cold in the womb. You know if you get a cold in your sinus and, the, and it's, you get a sinus congestion or sinus sinus congestion, if you have mucus in your lungs and it's hardened, you have what's called asthma or bronchitis. If you get mucus in your uterus, it is a tumor, it is a cyst, it is a vaginal discharge. You will then, as you begin to take your your woman's life herbal formula, your green life formula, you start to take your okra, which helps to soften the womb. You start to take your cranberry juice that flushes out the womb and all your arteries. You're going to start to get a vaginal discharge. So in a month's time, you'll start getting a vaginal discharge. Guess what that vaginal discharge is? It is the tumor that is softening up and becoming liquid. And it's so, so rather than cutting it out or lasering it out, you, it, it will begin to soften. It will begin to drain out like a cold draining out of the sinus. So that's just a little bit of what you can do to begin to get recover and to prevent that, that surgery. And more than likely, you will get heavy bleeding during your menstrual flow as a younger woman. Heavy bleeding that we don't realize is five days, six, seven days or more. That's heavy bleeding. But as we are told that that is normal. Every woman is different. No. Our menstrual flow should be no more than one, two, or three days. So then you get, to, you get this finality of let's do a hysterectomy because the tumor is there. Or let's just get a hysterectomy because you're bleeding heavy. Well, one of the, reasons, one of the things I'm looking forward to, to do with my sister is to come into Chicago and to teach this work. And that, for no matter what the womb issue is, fibroid tumors, whatever it is, vaginal discharge, endometriosis, it is, it's lessons that must be learned. So I'm teaching the courses, Womb Wellness Practitioner Training. It is a week and intensive because what I'm saying is the beginning, but what I'm teaching from are two books. For all womb issues, it's a, it's overcoming an angry vagina, journey to womb wellness. It's inside of that book, your dietary habits, your emotional cleansing, your spiritual cleansing, your element cleansing, that's in that book. And then you have In Sacred Woman, page 20 to 120. We're going to be going through that passage, rites of passage of work. So your rites of passage will not have to be a hysterectomy as a woman. It will be able to, you'll have a womb rebirth and a womb purge and a womb cleansing, and then you'll be able to help all the women in your circle because all the women in their 40s, 50s, and 60s, more than 75% of women will have a hysterectomy, and they are not aware that that's where they're going without changing your lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Mm, thank you, Queen. I have a Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'd like to know. Good morning, lovey. Good morning, lovey. <laughs> Good morning. Um, I would like to know where can I purchase the book. I'd like to know when are you coming. <laughs> I'm coming on March the first, second, and third. Is the Vision Quest that I come with enough response, I'll be able to come to Chicago to teach this womb wellness practitioner. So it's coming up for March, Women's History Month. So it's really perfect, and it's on the one. And the one is really about self-transformation on the one. So it's just the perfection of that. In those three days, we're going to work with the body, mind, and spirit of the womb in women. So I hope that you can come out to that. So where are you coming to? My sister, you want to tell them what we're doing so that and they'll know that the goal I'm coming to Chicago. Thank you. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, Queen. I, I, I apologize. Mm-hmm. 
No, no, no. I'm asking you to go ahead, go ahead and speak on it. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, we have, well, the Love Journey Incorporated is bringing Miss Queen of Four to Chicago mm-hmm. so that we can bring this work here and we as women can take this information, get certified in the information, and then begin to heal our community with this information that we're going to be having. And we're going to do it the first, second, and third uh, weekend. We haven't actually... Um, nail down everything, but it looks like um, we have a place at 7,000 South Shore Drive, but we're not, uh, you know, we're going to get everything together and get it out there and, and just go from there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, um, it, now, is this an open session or is it just for special people? You're special. It's Everyone for, on this call. It's for all the people it's, in the world that everyone. are special. <laughs> yeah. like, okay. You know, so not that, just, I, I, you do that. I, you won't I, be I, able to. I need to hear firsthand. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, this is um, in divine order because this is personal wellness and then it's professional wellness, which means those who are looking for personal wellness and professional wellness, that's the weekend. So whatever the womb issues are, I will be addressing it. And not only will I be addressing it, that I will we'll be having on Friday, we'll be having our food as medicine Saturday and Sunday. So we'll be doing natural living on Friday night, and then on Sunday we'll also be doing natural living with food as medicine. So you'll be able to eat the foods for womb wellness. On Saturday, all the women will be on a womb fast. So we'll be having our red womb julep, our our aromatherapy flower blend for emotional imbalances to balance you out, and then you're having your warrior queen wellness womb green tonic that you'll be juicing and we'll be flushing and cleansing and that's going to be a 24 hour miracle womb detox that's what we're talking about from six o'clock sunrise to six o'clock sun um set to six o'clock sunrise again we'll be fasting and cleansing in a controlled environment so we're going to be able to be in the same space And so when you come out those three days, you are restored, you are reborn, you are revitalized, you are charged, you are fortified. Now, those who say, I want to take it on a professional level because I'm going to be treating everybody in that way, that you're going to want to have a womb wellness circle when you complete. Because what I've learned, the reason why people fall off their healing is because they don't stay in a circle of wellness. But if you stay amongst others and you share what you gather then it keeps with you. It stays with you. So after you finish your 21-hour intensive for the weekend, you'll, start, you'll have a 30-day intern where we'll be, on, we'll be doing teleconferencing on our tower. Hello? I'm here. I'm still here. Okay. Hello. Oh my I'm, God! I'm I was like, the devil is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> and we are here. Nothing can stop the truth when its time has come, and we are here for the truth. So the 30 days will be your internship, and the, in that time, you will begin to counsel with women. Everyone coming in, you will identify three women, or to four women that you are who are willing to um, have you work with them, and that could be your mother because our mothers are in stress, they're just not talking about it. We're going to talk about our womb issues openly without shame, and we're going to begin to get the message and the wellness and the information to overcome. You can can bring your daughter into your circle. You can bring your aunt into your circle. You can bring your best girlfriend into your circle. What will happen in that 30 days, you will help them and share with them what you've learned over those those three days of transformation. And that will strengthen you because when you hear their testimonies of what you have been able to accomplish in a 28-day, 30-day period of a moon cycle, you'll realize, wow, this not only helped me, but the women in my circle it has been able to help them as well. So it is definitely personal wellness, and then it's on a professional level so that we can actually spread this one. And we're not putting um, the, our OBGYNs out of business. What we're doing is we're working with them. So you can still continue to see your physician, but you also will be taking 
you're, you're taking your life into your hands as well. There is an affirmation that the Most High gave to women in the very first civilization, the beginning of time. And that let us know that we're actually healers, and we have to take on our role as our personal healer. And this is the prayer. I am the woman who lightens the darkness. I have come to lighten the darkness. It is lightened. I have overcome the destroyers. I am there for those who weep, who hide their faces, who sunk down. They looked upon me then. I am a woman. I am a healer. That's who we are by our nature. And when we don't know how to heal ourselves, we're actually in prison. We're actually in pain. We're actually getting ready to have our wombs removed piece by piece. Maybe an ovary this year, and then fallopian tube the next year, and then a complete hysterectomy a few years later because of what we're eating is eating us. And it no, it's no need for that. We can overcome. We can overcome. Yes, indeed. Okay, where can we find the book? They the book is Amazon. <laughs> Thank you for keeping me on task. <laughs> you can find the books. Um, the book, the two books you'll need for this particular training, Overcoming an Angry Vagina Journey to Womb Wellness. You can get it through African World Books, and the number for African World Books is 410 383 Two zero zero six, or you can get it through Amazon.com. Um, that's overcoming an angry vagina journey to wellness. You can also get it, um, the Sacred Woman Journey, Sacred Woman, uh, a guide to healing the feminine body, mind, and spirit. Those are your two books that you're going to need in the class. And so those two books actually set you on on your course. And you can get that book from Barnes and Nobles. You get the Heal Thyself book also from Barnes and Nobles. And Man Heal Thyself, you, you know, so you can actually check the website. You can see the listing of books, the listing of my 21-day detox. You can also the listing of the charts that help support and set up your nutrition kitchen laboratory and so on. My website is www.queenoffua.com. This information in terms of this training will be on the website with my entire school. This particular training is the first training that breaks, opens up my new school. The name of the school is the Phenomenal Woman of Wellness School. And this training, the Womb Wellness Practitioner Training, opens up the school. And then there's another training the following month, which is the Womb Yoga Training. And that's a three-day retreat. All of them are based on retreats because it was the retreat that changed my life. It was a retreat that saved me from being in a state of disease. And so I know that three days, and even when I went to Kemet, which is miscalled Egypt, when I went there, they would show you the healing sanitariums. And the teachings was that, that you would go in there for three days, and in three days you would come out in a state of balance. You would come out in a state of ma'at, harmony, truth, righteousness, that, those three days is based on that, and then keeping a community of wellness growing. And the third month, we'll have it, we'll, I'll be tra- teaching the um, Sacred Spirit Hostess um, Spa Parties to become a spa party practitioner. And the fourth month, I'll be teaching the Sacred Woman Teachers Training. So those are the four trainings that come under the, the Holistic Medicine Woman's um, Pathway to Wellness. But the first one is the womb wellness. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Hi. Good morning. Well, ladies, first of all, and good morning to you, Queen. Good you know, morning. I have to say to you, I'm listening to you, and it's just so refreshing to hear um, you talk about this because I remember a couple of years ago, actually I'm in the middle of a detox now. Wonderful. And I remember a couple of years ago I um, – went to the doctor, and they said I had six fibroid tumors, mm-hmm. and that they were really big. Mm-hmm. And then they were checking for cancer. I, I forgot the name that they told me that mm-hmm. they thought I had. Mm-hmm. And my parents were so worried. They thought I had cancer and everything. But deep in my spirit, I never felt that I had anything, uh, mm-hmm. just what the doctors were saying. Well, anyway, I went into a detox for 30 days. Now, at this point, I was going to the doctor every three months for like eight months. Mm-hmm. And it was time for me to go again. I missed my appointment because they were monitoring me every three months. That's how big the five mm-hmm. points were. Mm-hmm. So I did a 30-day detox. No process. So everything was raw. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, I just meditated and just ate all raw. 
when I went back to the doctor to do the follow up, the, the three month follow up after I had missed one, mm-hmm. they they did the test. They couldn't find anything. They couldn't even find the fibroid tumors. Right. They couldn't find one. And the doctor asked me, "What did you do?" Mm-hmm. And I told her, "I did a detox." She said, "What's a detox?" Mm-hmm. And I told her what I did. She said, whatever you're doing, you keep doing it. Keep doing it. She said, because we cannot find one of the fibroid tumors on your mm-hmm. uterus or in your system at all. She said, whatever yeah. you're doing, you just continuously do. Yeah. My blood work had changed, everything. Of course. So ever yeah. since then, I swore by if there was anything wrong with my body, I would go into a detox rather than go to the doctor. If I catch the, uh, a cold or a flu, I'm I'm doing raw. I'm doing garlic. And they talk about me. They say, well, you need to go to the doctor. The doctors, I guess, are like we are. So I figured who knows our bodies more than we do, going to a detox, going to meditation, going to prayer, and we can mm-hmm. heal ourselves. So what you Absolutely. said, I'm so excited. I cannot wait till you get here because mm-hmm. I love educating myself to another level. Oh, I feel so good with this. It's an affirmation and a confirmation of the power to heal is within us. The power to heal ourselves is within us, and we definitely can heal ourselves. And so you are that living testament, and we give thanks for you having the courage to purge, the courage to cleanse, the courage to take your womb in your own hands and reshape and mold her and love her back to wholeness. We give praise and thanks. Continue womb wellness. Hello. Hello. Greetings. Hi. 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 Can you hear me? Well, yes, loud we can and hear clear. you. Good morning, Mama oh, Colette. Okay. Good morning, Mama Hi, Colette. Queen. Hi, Janine. <laughs> this is beautiful today. I'm in Germany. My name is Vonda Guzman, and I've been listening in, and I've just been so blessed and just so thankful that uh, this is happening for our women now because mm. basically, I mean, we really, really have needed this for so long. And to, to bless your journey, Queen, and mm. to bless your journey, Janine. And just to say thank you, I um, I went through certain processes and drug addictions for 18 years and emotional stuff and all, and I have just done, uh, I remember years and years ago I did a 40-day fast, and around the 34th day of the fast I was in the toilet and some big clump just fell out of me. Mm-hmm. And I can remember Ethel mm-hmm. Gons, who was my nutritionist, who I found after I got off the drugs, and she helped me change my life with eating and a lot of Dick Gregory stuff and all Bohemian diet and all these things. I can remember that she used to say to me when we were on the table getting a colonic, she used to say to me, there's something there, Vonda. And I mean, she said, this is like six months, she kept saying every time I go get colonic. I said, there's nothing there. I just have to go to the bathroom. It's my bladder. She hmm. said, okay. So hmm. I never went and got anything checked. Hmm. But, uh, excuse me, around the 34th day of that fast, it fell out in the toilet, mm. big red clump. Mm. And I was saying, what is that? <laughs> and then I said, <laughs> oh, leave it. And so I just flushed mm. it and kept mm. going. But, yes, what you are doing uh, is certainly in line. And I'm sorry if you all heard some noise because I was in here juice and I thought I was on mute, so I apologize for that. But, um, yeah, this is the way. This is the wisdom way of of spirit. This is the wisdom way of love, is that we all are responsible Mm. to ourselves and God working with us as Mm. a solid partner to Mm. enlighten us and speak Mm, to us. So in the meditation, in the quiet time, you know, in your Mm. time of reflecting, spirit speaks. And all we have to do is trust that voice that we hear. Don't overpower. Don't try and run it. Don't try and tell it what to do. This son My. and trust. So I just bless you all, and um, Janine, I'll just stay in touch with you. I'm glad to know that this is happening uh, in the mornings. Of course, it's in the afternoon for me, and I'm about to get out the door. But I wanted to be a part of it today, and definitely clean. I will definitely be getting in touch with you. Also, bring you on my uh, radio show. Life is so beautiful, and yes, you don't mind coming on because I love uh, to. Yeah, because we have to get we have to get all this out and done, and uh, because this is the time, like you said, after the Mayan calendar and this mm-hmm. this the, this this wisdom of women, this this feminine energy Come is coming now. in to help clean up mm. our.
planet, and I'm thankful and grateful to you all, and I honor you. Uh, Karina, I just want to ask you, do you have an email address that I could email you? Feedback at queenofford.com. Feed, Mm -hmm. Mm F-E-E-D, F-E-E-D, B-A-C-K, at Mm queenofford, A-F-U-A, dot com. A-F-U-A, dot com. Okay. Got it. I'll definitely Thank be you. in touch. And before, any you, before you get off, Vonda, can you tell us a little bit about you? You're a jazz singer. She's all the way in Germany. She's an amazing oh, spirit queen. This I is feel a it. beautiful reflection. She's an yes. amazing sister. She's a minister. Oh, my gosh, she's oh. beautiful. So tell us about you, Vonda. She has a radio show. I'm, oh, I'm yes, letting thanks. you talk, Vonda. <laughs> okay, well. Just quickly, I would just say that um, I um, was ordained as a minister of uh, VME Church over, oh, this was in 1884, 85, I think. You know, I got for drugs in 84, yes, so I was ordained in 88. But I went through a process in life where I continued to study and continued to fast and pray and all. And after I got mm. off the 18 years of drug addiction, mm-hmm. um, I went into the ministry, started a ministry called Freedom Now. It's still happening at Bethel AME Church. And, of course, we helped a lot of people get off of drugs and everything. But through my 40-day fast and then through doing an initiation with a lady at Juhill Park one day, she asked me, was I ready? And I said, yes. And after that initiation and my fast, it was like I couldn't stay in the church anymore. And it was like, Spirit was like, this is not, you're finished here. And I was like, huh? I was scared and everything. And so for three months I was meditating. I kept saying, Germany, Germany, Germany. So I got up and came to Germany. I thought, oh, you are crazy. This is madness. But because I heard it inside, I stayed and I began to do my music. So I sing Jazz, funk, soul, blues, gospel. I have my own gospel CDs. Um, I have my um, my own uh, music out. I, and I did a song called Life is So Beautiful that Spirit sung through me one day sitting on the train tracks. And a lady came up, and I said to the lady, how are you doing? She said, I'm not doing too good. My son found me. I tried to kill myself. And I said, this song is for you because the song came up in my in my belly about 10 minutes before she walked up. Life is so beautiful, life is so wonderful, how could I not want to live? And, and so it just came up, and so I said, this song's for you, and I started singing her this little piece of song, and she said, it is for me. Right after that, the train came, and I gave her a hug, you know, and I said, you know, you'll be fine. And she said, I said, aren't you getting on the train? And she said, no, I didn't come to get on the train. And I got on the train and bust out crying because I said, oh, my God, she was going to jump in front of the train because that's what they do here. She wasn't going to try it again so her son could find her, but she was going to jump in front of that train. So that went on. And then last year, Spirit said, go in the studio, do the song. And I did the song, and a lady whose son committed suicide, she found the song, and she said, we have to get this out to the world because it is beautiful. And so she said, what about a radio show? And I said, me on a radio show? You can't be serious. <laughs> so um, put the show. She gave me her show for two weeks, and then she wrote me that next Tuesday in the morning and said, you got to do your own. I'm not doing anything. Boy, you are you are amazed for this, and I was nervous and everything. And my friend told me, "I'll help you walk you through it and blah 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 and all." And I got through it, and I've been doing the show since uh, November of 2011, and celebrated a year in uh, November 2012. And just thankful we have all kinds of people, music people, uh, people like you who are sharing. We have just everybody that I can support because for me, the show is to support, to support, to plant seeds in people, to support and to do the enlightening and the awakening process that we all are available to, anybody that is available to it. So that's what I do. Powerful. Amen. Give thanks and Thank praise. You. Thank oh, you. Oh, blessings. Oh, I can't wait to get the, uh, the CD. <laughs> Played in all oh, circles. Oh, yeah, I'll sing you. I'll medicine. sing you. Life is so beautiful. I'll sing oh, you that today. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Good, thanks. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Thank blessings. you so much. Yeah, blessings to you all. I love you all. Thank you so much for this great work. I thank you. If I was thank in you. Chicago in March, I would come, and you never know, because a lot of synchronicity is going on. So we'll see. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Amen, Father. Amen. We give Amen. thanks and praise. <laughs> blessings. Yeah. Blessings to you all. Mm-hmm. And anywhere I can support, Amen. just let me know. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. 
Good morning. Good morning. Namaste. My sister, are you where are you located? I am in Brooklyn, New York. But when people ask me where am I located, I have to say I'm in the world <laughs> because I'm I'm in Chicago. I'm I'm right now I'm in Detroit and 40 people are going through a detox with me, and I'm in Washington um, next weekend, and then I'm going to Bermuda uh, on Thursday to teach. So I can't I no longer can say I'm in Brooklyn. I have to say the truth. I'm in the world as we are in the world, and we're not limited in a space or a block. So, but you can see me many, much of the time on physical level in consultation in Brooklyn, New York. So I heard that you say I heard you say you're in Washington. I'm in Washington. Where are you going to be? So I can hear you. Right. Well, check the website. I'm going to be at the Empowerment Center on the 26th. Um, uh huh. That's going to be in the afternoon, and so I will be sharing. It's going to be a free will. You can come out and just learn of what I'm doing with the school and why the school. Because I'm opening two schools of thought, which I didn't talk about now, but I'll talk about as I go further out on the journey, which is the Heal Thyself School of Thought, which is a 21 day, 12 week detox, learning to become an Emerald Green Holistic Practitioner. So I'm going to be speaking on that as well as speaking on the school for the women to come out for healing. I'll be speaking on the man's training. So that's on the 25th in, in Washington, D.C., because we plan on launching a 12-week program there. And your um, website? The website is www.queenafua.com. And my phone number here is 718-221-4325. 718 Four three two five heal. Good, great. Mm-hmm. Give thanks. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you, my sister. What is your name? I am Rosa J. Hodge. Rosa J. Hodge. I look forward to seeing you next Saturday in good, Washington D.C. Give thanks. Give thanks. Be blessed. All right. All right. Thank you, Rosa. Good morning. And our little girl. Good morning. Yes. Good morning. Um, I'm Deborah Ricks, and I'm calling from Baltimore. This is the first time that I've been on this call. I am so grateful that my friend Zakia told me about it. And um, I'm really excited about coming to New York. I mean, not New York, Chicago, going to Chicago for the weekend. But I'm looking at the website, and I'm really not yet you know, I'm not finding um, information that I mm-hmm. need. Not right. To, what what you can do. Early. I want to I want to make sure that I'm there. I want to know, you know, exactly how much everything is going to cost so I can start planning early. All right. What you will do is you can, you'll send an email of your interest to feedback at queenofford.com. You send an email of your interest. You can also, um, Janine, do you want to give them a way of contact because uh, we yes, can work together on this? Yes, you can call me at 773-447-5555. Mm-hmm. And this is you, Janine? Yes. Good morning, Deborah. Thank you for being a part of the call this morning. Thank you. Uh, Appreciate you. My delight. My delight. Mm-hmm. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, this is Tammy Matthews. Hi, lady love. Good morning, hey, Queen of Tammy. Four. <laughs> Tammy's a naturopath. Oh, I wonderful. Am. I'm in and good company. <laughs> <laughs> I am so looking forward to uh, continuing my training. Um, I trained under Dr. Laila Africa in 2008, yes. where wonderful. I received my yes certification as a holistic health consultant. So mm-hmm. I do have my practice. It will be three years in June here in Chicago, and I am looking forward to attending um, the training here in Chicago to just further my practice and give more knowledge. Well, I met you a couple of years ago when you were in Chicago, very mm-hmm. briefly, uh, when I was mm-hmm. actually beginning my practice, and I had just heard about you, and the ladies were like, you've got to come, you've got to come, so it's a part of the healing circle. And uh, so, again, I am so looking forward to seeing you here in Chicago in March. So thank you. Oh. Thank you, Lady Love. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for the Tammy. warm welcome. <laughs> yes. Yes, she is an amazing spirit, too. Mm, give thank thanks. you. All right. Well, I know we're after the hour. And if there's, we're, 
I, is there one more question? We're going to take one more question, and then we're going to bring Queen Hostess in with the motion so she can bring us a few little things, and then we're going to affirm our way and pray our way out. Queen Hostess with the motion, you can start six. Start six? No, no, Queen uh, Cl- Claudette is the person who gives oh. us a few. Uh, <laughs> All right. <laughs> nice. <laughs> She, we call her Queen Hostess. Oh, good day. I love it. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Judy. Hi. I wanted to ask you about inflammation. I had, um, what do you say, inflammation in my knee joints, mm. and I wanted to know what I could do for that. Oh, it's kind um, of painful. It's very painful. Mm-hmm. Well, one thing you can do, there is, I do have a clay that you, is a, you would get a gauze, and you put the clay on an inch thick, and you place it over the knee overnight. The clay has zinc, potassium, calcium, magnesium in it, and it pulls the poison and the pain out of the knee, and it feeds the minerals back. The inflammation is coming through years of congestion in the arteries, in the bones, and malnourishment. Disease is only two things, malnourishment. So if you nourish those the, the, the knee with the green juice, with the green light, then the knee will begin to return adding turnips to your in, in terms of juicing at least three times a week, it will begin to put the calcium back in naturally. Put the clay pack on, keep it on overnight, and that will start to take out, it will begin to get knee relief. Because that's the first thing to go is our knees. Once we hit about 38 years old, it's downhill. So that's how yeah, you Yeah, 59, almost 60 next birthday, and I said everything's mm-hmm. falling apart. Mm-hmm. But we can bring it back together, <laughs> and that's what the retreat is about. You know, actually addressing the the womb is essential is the center of the universe, the center of your body. Life comes through, but you have a whole body. You have your bones, you have your joints, you have your blood, you have your heart, you have your spirit, you have your relationships. It's in the body, but it's what we're birthing. So you're going to birth relief. It's going to show up in your knees. Mm-hmm. Alrighty, thank you. Thank you, Minnie Blue. Judy is a jazz singer as well. Thank you, Miss Judy. Oh, we're going to sing this planet into health and healing. <laughs> I love it. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. 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 Hi, Queen and Janine. This is Amira Christine. How y'all doing today? Just hey, Amira. Well. She's a singer as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And this is because of you. Thank you, Amira. I have all gratitude and everything to you. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Thank you. No, we manifested this together. We are now healing path. <laughs> we're about to change the world. Yes, we're Amen. about to change the world. It was in divine order because I was humble and I, I decided to reach out to you because Queen told me to, uh, you know, reach out. You want to come? Reach out. And I reached, and you came to mine. I said, okay, I'm going to call Janine. And I called you, and you was like, no problem. I'm on the ball. So I thank God for you. I thank God for you. We're about to change the world. Oh, yeah. And I'm glad. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Together. Give thanks. Together, together, unity. Mm. All right, well. This old thank lady, you, okay. uh, I uh, was talking to this old lady, and she told me that the world was not going to change until the women healed themselves. Exactly. That's right. It is well. We birth well, the yeah. earth. <laughs> Every, everyone who comes in, they come in through our wombs, and they come in because of the condition of our wombs. So we do birth the earth, and if once we get that, then everything does shift. Everything does change. It is in the birthing of the the, med- the women, the healers. The primary heal of the home is the woman. And as she said, then she's not an angry woman anymore. She's not a bitter woman. She's a loving woman because she knows that that is the power to heal. So men will not come and abuse her, will not rape her, will not beat her down because they're coming to her her in her highest self. She's sitting on her seat of power. So it is so right. You really got it. It is in the women. As we heal ourselves, we heal our men. In all our relations, we give thanks. Amen. 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 That's a powerful statement. You know, it takes me back to Malcolm X. What did he say in that movie? Mm. A one, a nation can rise no higher than this woman. Why? Because Absolutely. the woman is the first teacher. What Absolutely. did Minister Farrakhan say? He said, a nation that does not respect this woman will not be respected. So come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love it. And it is wonderful. 
And we're on common ground. I wrote a piece, if I can share this piece. Yes, share it. Can you say your phone number again, please? Yes, 718-221-4325. Common ground. Because this is um, the women on this call and our men who care for us and love us. Because, you know, as as we rebirth ourselves, we rebirth our men, and they come into their healing when they walk with us, because for all of us, this is gold in our, our limbs, blue our crown, and emerald our body. That is an affirmation our ancestors gave to us at the beginning of time, that our limbs must become like the sunlight and bring in the sun foods and bring in the sun thoughts, and we will begin to emanate light literally from our limbs, and our knees will not be in pain and our backs will not be hurting, and our bodies will not be swelling because we'll be in a golden state of vitality. Blue, our crown, represents the serenity of our minds, for the serenity of our mind creates a serene body temple. Emerald, our body, brings forth the chlorophyll, the green, the transformation, the renewal, emerald, our bodies. We in this circle... What I experience and what I'm experiencing right now is common ground. And this poem comes out of overcoming an angry vagina journey to womb wellness. Wombs clotting, wombs bleeding, clotting, hearts weeping, wailing. Face, hair done, face made up, nails manicured, dressed to the nines. In the fields, on the job, behind closed doors, behind the veil where women suffer, we are found on common ground, praying in the church, kneeling in the mosque, squatting in the sweat lodge, singing in the cathedral, meditating in the shrine. All the while, our wounds are screaming, fibroid tumors, hot flashes, PMS, STDs. You can find us on common ground. From everywhere deep inside, corporate work is screaming at the glass ceiling. Blue-collar work is doing a day's work for a day's pay. City work is going by the rules and entrepreneurs fighting for freedom. We mothers, we're mothers and daughters suffering from the same conditions. Balled up hemorrhage wombs, dried up prolapsed elder wombs, passed down through generations, filled with womb disregard, womb disrespect, womb wellness, ignorance, broke down, overuse, exhausted wombs, crying out for relief. We are rising in the east. We are facing the west, stretched out in the south, reaching for the north. We women can be found on common ground. Womb stories hidden up under our dresses, loppers, shorts, and jeans, tucked away behind our bladder, secured in the privacy of our pubic center. We're wearing our waist beads and pearls, diamonds and moonstones, still Womb stories bursting through veins from years of unresolved pain, reaching for relief while trapped in our toxic reality. We think we're alone. No. We search and search, and still we carry our pain in our purses, backpacks, and clutch bags. No one sees how common our ground is, how we're going to find our answers in our recovery in this world, this society, this religion, that way of thinking. It's just not working. Still, we keep dragging around our womb stories, carrying around our disappointments, resentments, hurt wombs, impacted with fibroid tumors and cysts, lining up for the the slaughter of the grand hysterectomy from our one relationship to the next with no way of healing our toxic womb conditions, no cure in sight. We've had enough, can't take no more womb tragedies. We're on common womb overload. Somebody, somewhere, somehow, please help me. We're calling for healing, all of us from the south of common ground and the north of deliverance and the east of womb consciousness, from the west of womb wellness. We are reaching for womb recovery. We women of common ground will recognize one another. One drawn together with our differences and our sameness to collectively tell our stories as our tears pour down from our wounds. Shouting out, wound wisdom, as our tears fall to the ground. Crying out, wound wisdom, answers flows as this dirt, 
this wood, this marble, this parquet floor mystically becomes sacred ground where our medicine grows into a bush, a herb, a plant, a prayer. Out of our tears, redemption flows here on common ground where the women folk blossom out of the mud into the lotus woman of wisdom. Thank you. Yeah.